Okay, I need to talk to you about something serious. What is it, Juko? I know what you've been up to since Namara left, and I have to remind you of something important. You may think you're clever, but in reality, you're only fooling yourself. What do you mean? The person who cheats is the one who lives with the guilt. You're entangling yourself in soul ties, wasting money, and risking your soul's salvation. I disagree with you, Juko. I will never lose my salvation. I believe that is what the Bible says. For as long as I have accepted the Lord as my Savior, I will live my life as I please because I will go to heaven no matter what I do. I am saved and there's nothing you or anyone can do about it. So you think that you will continue to disobey God, be unrepentant, dine with devils, have one foot in Christianity and another in worldly pleasures and still make it to heaven. Keep deceiving yourself, let's see how far it will take you. Let me stop the car and share some key verses with you. Akeke, listen to the following verses carefully. Romans 2.13 KJV says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Romans 8.5 says, For they that are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. Romans 8, 8 to 9 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I am not done yet, I just got started. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That's enough. I am getting out of the car. I am not done yet. Matthew 7.22-23 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And the key verses are the following. Hebrews 6, 4-6 says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Hebrews 10.26-29 says, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore a punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under foot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Hebrews 10.30-31 says, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance bellingeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Please explain those verses in simpler terms. These passages from the book of Hebrews emphasize the severity of willingly turning away from faith after experiencing the truth of God's word and the Holy Spirit's work. In Hebrews 10 26 to 31, it warns that if someone continues to sin deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, there's no further sacrifice for sins, only a fearful expectation of judgment. It compares the punishment for disregarding the law of Moses to the greater punishment for rejecting Jesus and the covenant he brought, which is seen as great disrespect to the spirit of grace. This passage underscores the seriousness of falling into the hands of God's judgment. 
Similarly, Hebrews 6, 4-6 discusses the impossibility of renewing someone to repentance if they've experienced God's grace and then turn away from it. It describes individuals who have tasted the heavenly gift, shared in the Holy Spirit, and experienced the goodness of God's word and the powers of the coming age. If they then reject this and crucify Christ anew, they cannot be brought back to repentance. These verses highlight the solemnity of apostasy, the deliberate abandonment of faith, and the inability to regain it once lost. What? All right, all right, I get it. Please expand on what you were saying about adultery. I didn't understand what you were getting at. Let me remind you of what the scriptures say. In Proverbs 6.32. More scriptures. In Proverbs 6.32, it's written, But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doth it destroyeth his own soul. What? Destroying my own soul. I never considered the consequences. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10, it's clear that the unrighteous, including adulterers, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a sobering reality, a KK. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. I've been living in sin, deceiving myself all this time. It's not too late to turn back, a keke. Repentance is the key to redemption. It's not that easy, my friend. It's as if there's something that draws me to sin. It's an overpowering force. Seek divine assistance in conquering the negative influences that lead you into sin. Your free will entails considerable responsibility for your choices. Attributing all poor decisions to demonic forces is unfounded. Repent, remove harmful contacts, especially bad friends, avoid situations conducive to sin, and prioritize spending time with God through prayer, praise, and worship. Philippians 2.13 KJV says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13 NLT says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Make it a habit to read the Bible daily and stay active. Recall the adage, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Alter your daily routines, regulate what you expose your mind to, and shift your mindset, recognizing that our most significant struggles occur within our minds. Safeguard your soul by abstaining from ungodly activities, such as watching inappropriate films or listening to questionable music, and be mindful of your friends and speech. It's easier said than done. You need deliverance, my friend. Seek the Lord's intervention for your deliverance. Remember, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who delivers, not mere individuals. Meditate on God's word, engage in fasting and prayer for your deliverance, and soon you'll find relief from generational curses and malevolent spirits in Jesus' name. Remember that genuine repentance is crucial before seeking deliverance, Otherwise, you might find yourself in a worse situation than before. Psalm 107, 19-21 says, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of the distresses. He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from the destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Furthermore, it's essential to uphold your deliverance by aligning your life with God's word. This entails familiarizing yourself with his teachings and consistently obeying them. Repent immediately when negative thoughts arise or when you engage in wrongdoing. Repentance involves ceasing the sinful behavior and not succumbing to the devil's deceit. Seek the Lord's empowerment to obey him, invite Jesus into your heart and daily life, and rely on his assistance continuously. Affirm his word in every circumstance, making it easier to resist temptations. I feel agitated just hearing all of this. I think what I said irritated your demons.
What I mean is that I believe my words may have stirred up unsettling emotions within you. I recommend wholeheartedly seeking the Lord's guidance and liberation from any entanglements. If your request is sincere, I trust that the Lord will grant you true freedom. And when the Lord sets you free, you will indeed be liberated. Yes, thanks for the chat, Juko. We're getting late, let's get out of here. We finally arrived in Mano. Yes. Thank you for keeping me company on this long trip. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your life story with me. I hope you will enjoy your stay here in Mano. Thank you, dear. It was nice meeting you. Stay safe. May the Lord richly bless you. Likewise. Thank you, ma'am. Arriving home in Mano, Namara is greeted by friends and family. It's so good to be back. Namara, we missed you. Sister-in-law, you're here. Welcome home, Namara. You're like a celebrity now. <laughs> oh, stop it, you guys. I'm just glad to see everyone again. As Namara settles back into life in Mano, she meets an old friend. Namara. Nansabuga. Nansabuga, our former high school preacher, it's wonderful to see you again. I still regret not heeding your advice all those years ago. I'm delighted to see you, Namara. I've just arrived from abroad to visit my Ellen mother. As you know, my husband and I oversee a ministry with a global reach. We are grateful for the journey we've been on and I've heard your thriving too. We are thankful to God for both our blessings. Indeed. I've watched you preach on TV, and I'm genuinely happy for your success. As for me, I'm getting by with God's grace. I feel ashamed to admit the line of work I'm in. I realize my life would have been much better and simpler if I had stayed in school and avoided distractions like relationships. It's true what they say, if you have an easy time in your 20s, lacking direction and skills, you're likely to face challenges in your 40s and beyond. Conversely, the opposite holds true. Namara, please don't be too tough on yourself. Making mistakes is part of being human. What truly matters is that you've gained wisdom from those experiences and are maximizing the opportunities life has presented you with. You still have the potential to create significant positive change within your sphere of influence. Thank you Nansabuga for not judging me. The economy seems worse than before. I need to do something to help. Unfortunately, that's true. Our ministry is currently providing food and shelter for twice the number of individuals we assisted last year. This increase is putting a strain on our finances, but we trust in the provision of the living God, who always finds a way for us. Amen. If you ever need help, Namara, please feel free to ask. Here's my card. Thank you, Nansabuga. Word spreads about Namara's successful business ventures and more women in the village express interest in joining her. Namara, can you teach me your business strategies? I want to start my own business too. Certainly, I'm willing to assist you. Just keep in mind that our daily routine involves walking for a minimum of 8 hours, typically under the scorching sun and sometimes across deserts. If you're up for that challenge and ready to engage in door-to-door -door sales, then you'll be well suited for the task. Unfortunately, at my age, I don't think I can manage that. I'm confident you'll discover a fulfilling activity to engage in. Given your background as a retired teacher, perhaps you could explore opportunities such as assisting students with their homework or offering extra classes to high school students. Yes, that's a brilliant idea. Identify your strengths and brainstorm ways to contribute to the well-being of others. Thank you, Namara. Namara, I tried starting my own business, but I couldn't raise enough funds. Don't worry, I'll see if I can help you get started. Remember to start small and then gradually grow the business. Despite some setbacks, Namara's influence and generosity continue to grow, making a positive impact on the lives of many in the village. A few weeks later. Another trip away from my family. I wish I could stay with them longer. What's wrong, Namara? It's just hard being away from my family all the time. 
but so many people are depending on me now, I can't let them down. You're doing amazing things, Namara. Your family and your community are proud of you. I give God all the glory. By the way, Nalongo, I've been saving some money secretly every month in Novastria. I want to turn my dream of opening a distribution, sales, and delivery business into a reality. Since I don't have the collateral to get a bank loan, I will save and invest part of the profits from my business. I will save until I raise enough money to start a small distribution center in the remote villages of Novastria. That's ambitious, Namara, but I believe in you. With your determination, you'll make it happen. It'll take years of saving and hard work, but I won't give up. I want to create opportunities for people in remote villages. A few months later, Namara returns to Mano. Namara, have you heard the latest rumors about Akeke? What rumors? People are saying he's been unfaithful to you again. I'm not worried. I have a plan to deal with that. Akeke, it's time for you to get tested again. But Namara, I showed you my test results the day you got here. Today, I will speak my mind. I don't trust you and the seemingly conveniently obtained test results. My preference is for us to visit the clinic together and await the results. Okay, we can go for testing together, but we won't stay for the results. I can't spend the entire day idly waiting at the clinic, I have other commitments to attend to. I will wait then. Absolutely not, I won't allow you to collect my test results on my behalf. My results are private, and I'll decide if I want to share them with you or not. I have concerns about possible deception. Akeke, it's crucial for us to be transparent with each other. I can't sustain a relationship with someone I can't trust, someone who keeps things hidden from me. If the results you provided me with a few days ago are authentic, then you shouldn't object to me reviewing your new test results, as presumably, nothing would have changed. Namara, enough with these constant tests and fabricated results. I've been deceiving you because you have no authority to compel me to undergo testing. Furthermore, even if you take me to the hospital or summon a doctor to test me here, there's no assurance that I won't manipulate someone to alter my results. If I were in your shoes, I'd abandon these futile tests altogether. You need to cease bullying me. So, you've been putting my life and health at risk all these years, Akeke. I maintain innocence until proven otherwise. What evidence do you possess to suggest my guilt, Namara? Despite not contributing financially to our household, I still consider myself the head of the household. If you lack trust in me and value yourself truly, then feel free to depart. The door is open, my friend. Remember, it was your family who pressured me into marrying you. However, as long as you reside under my roof, I establish the rules. I don't care about the village elders and council. How many of those elders are still alive today? You're aware that many of them succumb to the same illnesses and viruses that you fear. Woman, if you're unhappy, feel free to leave, but my children will remain with me. You're obligated to continue providing for them, otherwise, they'll suffer here. I think I better call Mum Nakakand. She'll know what to do. Do not involve my mother in this matter. If you try that again, be prepared for my reaction. Furthermore, you consistently heed the advice of Mum Nakakand, but how often have you seen her disobey my father, drag him to the village council, or compel him to undergo testing? The villagers are all occupied with mocking you for airing our marital issues. Are you the first or the last woman to experience infidelity? Mum Nakakand may offer you advice, but in her own marriage, she never raises her voice against my dad or questions his decisions. I'll reiterate, if you're unhappy, feel free to leave, but my children will remain with me, and you're responsible for supporting us. Your father being a pastor, I'm confident he adheres to the teachings of the Lord, which is why your mother has no trouble following him. At times, I question if the pastor is truly your father. <coughs> My biggest concern right now is, where will I go if I leave this homestead? I don't care about your concerns. However, as long as you remain my wife and live here, you will show me respect and follow my instructions. You've witnessed the consequences of coercing me into actions before, haven't you? During my time in Pallavi, I fabricated test results. Even if I'm compelled to undergo testing today, I can still influence the results through bribery. Furthermore, I have the capability to manipulate your test results and expose them to the village. I'll accuse you of transmitting viruses to me and claim that you're involved with multiple men in Novastria. Test me if you dare.
starting today, I'll be sleeping in our daughter Kansime's room as I strategize my exit from this sham of a marriage. I'll be taking my children with me, and considering we're not legally married, you won't be entitled to any spousal support. Ekeke, I'm finished with this. Here you go again. Do you want to stir up gossip about us once more? What will people think when they see you sleeping in Kansime's room? As long as you reside here, you will fulfill your duties as my wife, including sharing my room. Otherwise, pack your bags and depart immediately. I won't depart without my children. I refuse to see them end up like you. At the moment, I have nowhere else to go, but I'll be staying in Kansime's room while I search for a suitable place for my children and I to live. Namara, my children will not be leaving with you. All right, I'll be departing for Novastria in a few days. Before I leave, I'll be reporting this matter to the police. Let the courts determine who gets custody of the children. By God's grace, I'll secure a place to reside before the court proceedings. I'll demonstrate to the courts that you're an incompetent father. You've never contributed to school fees or clothing for the kids. Even the clothes you wear were provided by me. You're nothing but a worthless village he goat. The next day. Police chief, I've come to report my husband, Akeke Wilfred Mensa, for endangering my life and health by refusing to undergo testing and fabricating test results. Furthermore, I'm requesting full custody of our three children from the courts, as I have been their sole provider since their birth. Madam, these are grave accusations. In this country, your husband could potentially face lengthy imprisonment, particularly if it's determined that he knowingly transmitted an STI to you or intentionally endangered your life. In fact, if we can unequivocally demonstrate that he has been living recklessly and endangering your life, you'll have a compelling case. Nevertheless, I must warn you that this legal case could prolong for years, and you'll require the services of a lawyer, which can be costly. The simplest solution may be for you to leave OKK and fight for custody of your children. How old are your kids? The kids are in their teens. The twins are 17 while my daughter is 14. Chief, are you suggesting that I should simply let him go without any further action? It appears that you lack evidence to substantiate your allegations. Do you possess copies of the forged medical reports? Do you have any witnesses to support your claims? No. He disposed of all the reports after showing them to me. However, he confessed everything to me. Do you have a minimum of two witnesses? I mean, at least two individuals over the age of 18 who heard him confess. Did he disclose who assisted him in forging the health reports? No, Chief. Madam, I recommend you concentrate on pursuing a divorce through a traditional court since your marriage isn't legally recognized. We're aware that these courts typically favor men unless you have a strong case and support from your village elders. Several years back, our village elders and my in-laws assured me of their support to leave Akeke if he ever cheated on me again. I trust I have their backing. However, there's a complication. What's that? If I depart from my husband's family compound, I'll be without a home. Despite running a cross-border trading business, my earnings are stretched thin by various expenses such as school fees, bills, the house helps salary for looking after my children while I'm away, and purchasing food for our extensive family. Consequently, I lack the financial means to rent my own place in this village. What about moving in with your parents, relatives or friends? With three children, and in my cultural context, divorced women are not readily accepted back. Additionally, I have unresolved issues with my parents. Namara, address the housing situation, obtain written support from your village elders, bring your children's birth certificates, complete the affidavit form, and then return to me. I'll make every effort to expedite the process of proceeding to the traditional court. It's crucial for you to escape from this ordeal as swiftly as possible. If I were you, I wouldn't share a room with Okiki any longer. Yes. I have already moved into my daughter's bedroom. I hope I didn't catch anything while I was sharing a room with Akeke. Go and undergo a comprehensive health examination. I will do so once I can afford one in Novastria. Additionally, I intend to undergo testing at the city clinic as soon as I arrive there. Exactly. Namara, regardless of the circumstances, maintain hope, persevere, and most importantly, maintain faith in God. Don't jeopardize your life or health for anyone.
While I wish there were more we could do for you, believe me when I say that God has a way of seeking justice on our behalf. His justice surpasses anything we could do to our adversaries. Have faith in his plan. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for watching this episode of Namar. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. As the episode concludes, we are left with poignant reflections on trust, accountability, and the consequences of deceit. Namara's journey unveils the complexities of marital strife, societal expectations, and the pursuit of justice. OKEC's actions highlight the destructive nature of infidelity and the importance of facing the consequences of one's choices. Through Namara's confrontation with OKEC and her subsequent decision to seek legal recourse, we witness the power of standing up for oneself and seeking justice in the face of betrayal. Her courage to confront Okek and report him to the authorities underscores the importance of holding individuals accountable for their actions, regardless of their societal status or personal relationships. The conversation between Okek and Juko serves as a sobering reminder of the spiritual and moral implications of infidelity. Okek's realization of the spiritual consequences of his actions prompts introspection and the recognition of the need for repentance and redemption. Ultimately, this episode serves as a cautionary tale about the fragility of trust, the importance of accountability, and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. It reminds us that while forgiveness and redemption are possible, they require sincere repentance and a willingness to confront one's own wrongdoing. As Namara navigates the complexities of her situation, she embodies resilience, strength, and a commitment to justice, leaving viewers with valuable lessons on integrity, forgiveness, and the pursuit of truth. A lot of verses were shared by Jujuko in this episode hence, we will only share a few verses. James 1.22 KJV says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Psalm 107. 19 to 21 says, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he salveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Philippians 2.13 NLT says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And Psalm 118, 8 says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we conclude this episode, we come before you with hearts of gratitude for the lessons learned and the wisdom gained. We acknowledge your sovereignty and your presence in every aspect of our lives, including the challenges we face and the decisions we make. Lord, we pray for guidance and discernment in navigating the complexities of relationships, for the strength to confront wrongdoing with courage and grace, and for the wisdom to seek justice tempered with mercy. We ask for your healing touch upon broken hearts and wounded spirits, that you may bring comfort and restoration to those who have been betrayed or hurt. Help us to extend forgiveness as you have forgiven us, and to walk in your love and compassion towards others. Father, we lift up those who may be struggling with temptation or facing difficult decisions. Grant them your wisdom and strength to resist sin and choose righteousness, knowing that your ways are higher than ours and your grace is always sufficient. May your truth illuminate our paths, your love sustain us through trials, and your peace guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, and may your will be done in our lives, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.